Alrighty, let's go ahead and look at adding digital I.O. Um, if you'll notice, I have a push button up at the top. It's a Schneider ZB5. Um, we have a start and a stop. So we have two contacts. The start is in input one and the stop is in input two. Um, to figure out the wiring for that, we went to the Phoenix contact webpage, put in the uh, article number, and we went down to downloads, data sheets, and we got the one in English. Um, so this is your terminal point assignment. Um, we know A1, A2, which is red, is 24 volts. B1, B2, which is blue, are ground. Um, and then our digital outputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 10, 11, 20, 21, 30, and 31. Um, and then you'll see that they are 24 volts, so they are PNP type. Um, so we are taking 24 volts, pushing it through the switch, and then that 24 volts goes to the card. Uh, on the output side, we're feeding 24 volts out to the device, less than 500 milliamps, and back to ground. Um, so now that we know that and we have it wired up, we can take a look at the software. So if we double click on DIO1, um, what you'll see is we have a data list. So you have a couple options. Um, you can attach a byte and then each bit is one of the inputs. Or you can assign each input individually with a variable. I prefer to do it the byte way, probably the hard way. Um, but if something happens and I need to retag IO, um, it's simply retagging one byte instead of trying to uh, retag, you know, eight inputs or potentially more. Some of these cards have 64 inputs, um, so those can be breaking down, broken down into words, um, and that's the way I prefer to do it. Um, there are a couple of settings. Um, so say you lost communications to the card. Uh, at this point, we say set it to zero. Uh, you could also hold last value. So if the digital output was off, lose communications, the digital output is going to stay on. Um, we can also adjust the filter time. Three milliseconds is the standard, but if you're trying to catch a one millisecond pulse, a three millisecond filter time is not going to do you any good. So that's where we're going to have to adjust our filter times. Um, that's pretty much all there is in there. Uh, there's some more information, version cards, etc. Um, so let's go back to I.O. testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a byte um, because we know that the inputs will take a byte because it's a bit string 8. Um, so I can go X and then I can go I.O. card number 1 and I can say digital inputs. Um, we don't want that to be a bool, so I'm going to start typing byte. I'm going to hit enter. And then the usage, uh, because we do want to connect it to that digital output card, is going to be external. Um, and you'll notice when I make it external, all this stuff goes away. Um, in order to change a uh, external I/O, you do need to go to the data list. Um, so these are all of the parameters inside the PLC, all external variables, I/O, uh, all that gets added here. And if you'll notice down at the bottom, that's the one we added. So if we expand this little square over, um, you'll see that you now have a whole bunch more information. You have the ability to change the type, uh, the initial value, whether it's a retained value, a constant, which doesn't get changed, and then whether you want it over OPC or Profi Cloud. Um, we can go over that in more detail later, but for now, um, we're just going to go ahead and attach that. So if we go DIO1, we're going to go to data list, and then we want the digital inputs. And since I only have one external variable that meets those conditions because it's a byte, it's the only option I have. Um, now that variable is tied to the eight digital inputs. Um, so if we were to go ahead and write a program, um, we could say something like if, let me do X, I, O, C, D, I, and then in Phoenix contact, you can assign by bits. So if we put a period and then we do the X with the tab and then we do zero, now we're using bit zero. So we're saying if D, I, bit zero, then, 
and then we're going to just turn an output on, which we don't actually have set up yet. So let's go ahead and do X IOC, and then we'll do one, and we'll do DO, and again, that's going to be a byte, and it's going to be an external variable. Um, so then basically we can say X IOC one DO dot X, and then we can say zero, and we do equals true. Um, then we can do an else, and then we can say uh, X IOC DI dot X zero or X one actually, because we're going for the second input. Um, then we'll say X IOC DO dot X zero equals false. So basically, if we touch the first digital input, we're going to make it true. And if we um, hit the second DO, then that's going to be false. And then all we have to do is an end if state. So now we have these variables. This actually needs to be an else if actually, which then um, gets rid of my error. So um, now we're basically saying if digital input one comes on, make digital output true. Else if digital input one two comes on, uh, then make it false. So let's just try it. I don't know. This is the first time I've written it. Um, so let's see. So we're going to right click. If you are not connected, um, you can connect. If you're not logged on, you may have to click log on. Right now, we're good. Um, so I'm just going to hit right and start project. So it's going to build my project. It's going to compile my project. And now that I'm actually seeing it, I actually know that I did something wrong. I don't believe I attached my digital output. Now, to try check that, we could go back to the card. And if you'll notice, it didn't actually select a variable. So we're going to go back offline. So all we have to do is get rid of the debug. That's going to bring all this information available to us to edit again. Then all I'm going to do is select the XDO. So if we go ahead and rewrite and start that project, um, we'll wait for the controller to load and start, which it has. Um, now to see a live program, you double click inside the task. Um, so what you'll see is right now everything is false. And if I run up and push the green push button, we should end up with the digital input on. And that should have fired that state. But it doesn't actually appear that it has. So let me figure out what might be going on. It looks like we have a couple of bus failures, which I'm not actually sure why. We have the proper cards in um, the proper slots and in the proper placement. We have all of our wiring um, is completed and turned on, um, but we still end up with a diagnostics error. So I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that our program is not actually running. Um, because when I push the start button, I don't get anything inside of the PLC itself. So let's figure out why we don't have anything inside of this PLC. So it looks like it's de debugged. It looks like it's running. So we don't have any running failures like a divide by zero um, or anything like that. So why this is giving us a hard time is interesting. Let's check something. So if I take this, and then these are my raw data values, um, and I push the green button, I actually don't see any of the raw data values going. So there is definitely something wrong um, with either my wiring or the snapping of the card onto the back plane or the back plane itself, because we do have a diagnostics failure. 
Um, and this could actually be the card that I got from Jackson. That's actually broken. So we go here. Uh, we actually log in to the PLC. Um, see what we find. Um, we'll update the password. Sure. We'll go to diagnostics. We'll go to local bus. Ooh. So that's not a good sign. Um, looks like we have a bus error. Um, so I believe it's going to be that digital input, digital output card. Probably not any good anymore. Um, I do remember taking one back for a customer and doing an exchange. Um, and that's probably what's happening here. Uh, so let me get this fixed and we'll be back. Alrighty, we're back. I've got a new IO card up there. Let's see if that solves my problem. So in order to get that to basically take the new card, I'm going to have to stop the PLC um, and just do a cold restart, which in this case isn't going to do us any harm. Uh, if you were out in the field and the machine was running, uh, this could cause some problems, but for us it's going to be okay. So we're going to put the controller into stop, and then we're going to go ahead and do a cold start. Um, let's see if that solves any of our problems. Um, it looks like it did not solve our problem. So if we come back here, we'll just refresh this local bus window. Um, and we're actually still having local bus errors. Um, so let's go ahead and stop and we'll see if I can't, um, fix it. All right. So we're back again. Um, I'm going to put, leave the new module, but I actually swapped out the backplane connector, uh, just in case that was my problem. Um, so let's go ahead and stop this controller and we'll do a cold restart and see if that fixes our problem. Um, let's find out. Let's go back here and here and we are still failed. It's still giving us a bus error. We have no local bus. I'm actually going to go ahead and do a power cycle. So stand by. Uh, Alrighty, we're back. Um, I still haven't fixed the problem. Now it's got me kind of curious. Um, you shouldn't have to put in the blanks, but let me go ahead and put them in. Let's see if that solves our problem. So we know there's just a bunch of empty slots. Um, so if we take this, drag it over, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. Um, so now we actually have all the slots populated. I don't know if that's going to solve our problem or not, um, but we'll find out. So we're going to write and start the project. We're going to wait for the controller to load the program, and it looks like that solved our problem. So we do need extra slots. Um, so went through all that for nothing, um, but either way, you learned something, hopefully. So back to the digital output. We are online, so let's see if pushing the green button makes this byte change, which it in fact does. All right, so we are getting back into good shape. So if we double click on IO testing and we go here, you'll notice that the digital output is true, which is what we would expect. And then when I hit the stop button, we would expect the digital output to go off, which it did. So start, digital output on, stop, digital output off. Um, so very simple, very easy. Um, and again, I did it using bytes instead of individual uh, Booleans or bits. Um, 